Hi everyone, Christina here. Today I'm going to be creating a card using this new stamp set from Avery L called Easter Blessings. And I thought this image in particular would be perfect for a technique that I've been wanting to try, which is watercoloring over the top of a gold embossed image. So I'm starting out with some watercolor paper and my cat is meowing in the background if you can hear him. Um, I'm starting out with a watercolor paper that's cut to 5 inches by 5 inches. I've prepped that with my EK Success Powder Tool and now I'm stamping the, both the image and the greeting in some Versamark ink. I'm pressing that stamp set down really well because it is a really large area. I want to make sure I get a really clean impression of the stamp. And then I'm sprinkling on some rich pale gold embossing powder from WOW. I'm using a coffee filter to catch all of the embossing powder as I shake it off. And I got this tip from Jennifer McGuire about using the coffee filter. It's been really great. You guys normally see me use just a piece of scratch paper, but the coffee filter has worked out pretty well. I don't drink coffee myself, but these coffee filters are pretty inexpensive, so um, I don't mind using them. And they're super easy to just funnel the excess powder back into the jar when you're done. So I took my heat tool and heat up this image here until it was melted. Uh, when you're embossing on top of watercolor paper, you want to make sure you don't emboss it too long or heat it up too much because it can kind of absorb into the paper. So just watch till it's just melted. Today I'm using a new watercolor set, new to me anyway. This is the Kuratake Gansai Tombi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm kind of guessing here. But it's this really great watercolor set with these individual pans that you can kind of rearrange into whatever color configuration you want. And it actually, they have a couple different ways you can buy it. I think there's a 12 set, a 24, and a 36. I have the 36 set. I decided to just go for it and get the big set because I had heard from so many, people, so many people that they absolutely loved it. So I sort of... Uh, suspected that I would love it too and I was right this is a really great watercolor set it's very similar to the Sakura Koi I think it's the pocket filled guide or filled pocket watercolor I can't remember what it's called it's the one you guys usually see me use and I think I'll be using both of these uh, in the future this set is quite large it has bigger pans of color and so it's much larger than the pocket one so for travel I think I would probably take the pocket one but for at home use or if you just want some really a really nice color selection this is a great set of watercolors so as you can see as you watercolor on top of the embossed areas the embossing resists any of that color and it sort of builds a well for you to put your color in. You can drop in quite a bit of color within these areas and they won't spread outside of the embossing. So if any of you are new watercolorists or you're just getting into watercoloring, this is a great way to kind of test the waters and play with your watercolors without so much pressure on staying within the lines or anything like that. It's a great way to just get those colors out and start playing. So I mixed up quite a few different colors and um, dropped in colors into those areas. I wanted to make sure that there was a little bit of shadow on the bunnies and then the flowers were going to be uh, yellow, pink, and purple. So for this purple color I added some white. There is a white color on, in this watercolor set which is nice. So after all of that painting was done and finished, I had a little spot that had um, a little tiny bit of color that was just kind of spattered onto it and I wanted to clean that up. So I took my craft knife and just really carefully scraped away at that area really gently. You can't see it on camera too much because it was a very small area, but it was enough that I wanted to clean it up. So I just scraped away at that area until the color was gone. And then I took a, an eraser just on a regular pencil and it smoothed out that area. So the card base that I created is a 5x5 five five card base. I ended up trimming down this watercolor piece and to be four and a quarter by four, four and three quarters by four and three quarters. And the card is a top folding 5x5 five five card made out of bog cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I ended up adding a little bit of twine. This is May Art Natural Twine and just tied that in a bow. And there is the finished card. Super simple and easy. After all of the more involved cards I've made recently, I was ready to do something more simple. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's card. Thanks so much for watching.
again, thanks for watching. Just a reminder that all of the supplies that I've used on today's card are listed down below in the video description or over at my blog. On screen right now are three of my recent card videos, so you can check any of those out. And you can also visit my blog at kwarnerdesign.com. Follow me on social media at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. And subscribe to my YouTube channel up in that top corner. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.